In this episode, you'll learn about indicators, controlling future output, assuring quality, and increasing productivity. If you remember from my last video, you were tasked with creating a cafe that sells one dish, a three minute soft boiled egg, buttered toast, and a coffee. You were the only employee, and in the beginning, prepared, cooked, and served breakfasts yourself. And as it turns out, customers liked what you're selling. You've made enough to invest in additional staff and automated equipment for the eggs, toast, and coffee. Your output is no longer the breakfast you serve personally. Rather, it's the breakfast your cafe delivers, profits generated, and customer satisfaction. But how do you track that? You need to come up with indicators focused on specific goals and track progress against them. These are the five indicators that I'd pick. One, sales forecast. How many breakfasts should you plan to deliver? To assess how confident you should be in your prediction, you need to measure the variance between breakfast delivered versus forecasted. Two, raw material inventory. Do you have enough eggs, bread, and coffee to get through the day? Have too much? Cancel today's order. Too little? Order more. Three, equipment. Does anything need repair or replacement? If so, rearrange the production flow or lower your forecast. Four, workforce. Are all your staff there? Do you need to move someone from making coffee to toasting bread? And five, quality. You need to know what customers think. There's no point doubling the number of breakfasts sold if half of them don't meet the mark. Indicators are essential for guiding your attention and driving decision making. You need to look at them early each day so you can correct problems before they get out of hand. At the same time, you need to guard against overreacting. Do this by pairing indicators so effect and counter effect can be measured. For example, increased sales and decreased quality is a problem. Any measurement is better than none, but truly effective indicators focus on output, not activity. Indicators that are accountable should be paired with indicators that stress quality. Measure breakfast sold, not the number of eggs boiled. In summary, indicators outline objectives, provide objectivity, and measurability, and allow comparison of similar teams. Think of your cafe as a black box. Raw material and labor go in and breakfasts come out. Indicators are windows into the black box, which allow you to better understand the internal workings of the process without actually doing the work yourself. Leading indicators show what the future may look like providing time to take corrective action to avoid problems if needed. To be effective, you must believe in their validity. Choose credible indicators so you act when warning signs appear. Otherwise, all you'll get from monitoring is anxiety. Quality is an excellent leading indicator as a reduction in quality often leads to fewer sales in the future. Sales are what is known as a trend indicator, where output is measured against time, this month versus last month, and a standard or expected level. By extrapolating from the past and comparing real results to the forecast, you are forced to think through why. These types of indicators are best to get a feel for future trends. You can also use linearity indicators to plot a goal against the month of the year. If everything goes to plan, your numbers should follow a straight line that would hit your target by the end of the period. If you find yourself below the ideal straight line, you know you can only hit your target if you do better than you've done in the previous months for the remaining time. Linearity indicators give you early warning signs and time to take corrective action. As you can tell, Indicators are a big help for solving all kinds of issues. If something goes wrong, you have a bank of information ready to analyze. Without them, you're flying blind. By the time you find a problem and gather the information needed to make a decision, the situation will have gotten worse.
There are two ways to control output. One, build to order, making breakfasts as requested. And two, build to forecast, making breakfasts in expectation of orders. Build to order reduces inventory risk, but slows production times. In contrast, build to forecast suffers when orders are higher or lower than the forecast. When building to forecast, you must run two simultaneous processes. One, manufacturing. Raw material moves through production and becomes a finished good. And two, selling. Sales finds prospects and sells the product. Ideally, these two processes finish at the same time, with the order from the prospect arriving just as the product is finished. In practice, this is rare. Orders might not come in in time, customers can change their mind, and manufacturing can miss deadlines or hit unforeseen issues. This is why manufacturing and sales must prepare their own forecasts and work together to determine how to produce ahead of time. Because either process can go wrong, it's important to have slack in the system in the form of inventory. The more inventory you have, the quicker you can adapt to changes in market conditions. But inventory costs money, so keep stock at the lowest value stage possible, which has the highest production flexibility for a given inventory cost. Think raw eggs, not boiled eggs. You can apply these same principles to the management of people rather than manufacturing flows. Forecast the number of people you need to accomplish a task and keep slack in the system to account for problems or increased demand. Assuring quality in production requires inspection. The first type of inspection is known as an incoming material inspection or receiving inspection and happens before material enters your black box. Inspections that occur within your black box are called in process inspections and inspections that occur before the customer receives the product are called the final or outgoing quality inspection. Assure quality and reduce costs by rejecting defective material at its lowest value stage. When material is rejected at incoming inspection, you have the choice to send it back to the vendor as unacceptable, or you can waive your specifications and use it anyway. The latter would likely result in a higher reject rate during in-process and final inspections, but may be less expensive than stopping production altogether. The choice you make will generally come down to economics. But never let substandard product reach the customer if it could cause complete failure. Inspections, like inventory, cost money and interfere with production. So you'll need to balance improving quality while minimizing disturbances. There are two main techniques to balance these needs. One, gate-like inspection. This is where material is held until tests are complete and then accepted or rejected. This slows down the manufacturing process. And two, monitoring. The bulk of the material flows, but you take samples to determine a failure rate. Monitoring is cheaper and has no comparable slowdown, but bad material may escape. If this happens, you'll need to reject material at a higher value stage. If the failure rate is too high, you'll need to stop production. As a rule of thumb, prefer monitoring when experience shows you aren't likely to encounter issues. Another way to reduce costs is to use variable inspection. No problems for weeks, check less often. If problems develop, test frequently until quality returns. Variable review means lower costs and interference. Productivity is output divided by the labor required. To increase productivity, you can increase the speed you work at or you can change what you do. The latter is the better choice. You want to increase the ratio of output to activity rather than increasing activity itself. You want leverage. Leverage is output generated by specific work. The higher the leverage, the higher the output you generate for the same amount of activity. Arrange work in your black box so every activity is high leverage. 
You can do this through automation and work simplification. If you can automate a task or make it simpler, invest the time to do so. Remember, increased productivity comes from stressing output and increasing leverage. Increased activity can result in the opposite.